Hello everyone. Um, I'm here to, I know it's been a little while since I've made a video, so I just wanted to do a little update and show you my, my camper. Uh, this is my 2016 uh, Palomino Puma. Um, it is 27 feet long and it weighs 6,040 pounds. It's a lightweight camper. Um, I've had it since May and I've used it a bunch. And so I just wanted to show it to y'all and um, tell you a little bit about it. So we're gonna start off in the bedroom. Um, there's an entry door here, little light switch that controls that light. There's a light behind me here that you can turn on and off like that. Um, you've got storage on both sides with, you got a little table here, storage underneath. Um, this is the top of the pass-through storage underneath in the front of the camper. There is a little wardrobe here with a mirror on each side. And there are two doors over top on each side. Um, and it's the same over here. You got a window. One of my big things with this is in the morning. That was just a little clear see-through window on the door. Or it was opaque, but I let the light through. And so whenever the sun would rise, it would get very bright in here. And so I bought just this little screen at Camping World. It's um, like a reflective bubble wrap material that uh, really keeps the sun out of here and makes it a lot more comfortable. Um, it is about 2.30 in the afternoon. And, you know, I've got that door open, but you can turn the lights off. You can sleep in here all day if you want to. And uh, it stays pretty, pretty comfortable in here. Um, I added... This TV, originally there was a 32-inch TV there, I think. Um, I didn't like that one. This is a 42-inch Vizio that uh, I installed myself. Um, just took the old one down, took the bracket off of it, and put it on this one. And then that's a 30... I can't remember what size the soundbar is, but obviously it's the same size as the TV. And they pair together. They're really nice. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about the TV here in a minute. Right now we're going to go into the rest of the rooms and I'll show you around. And before I left the bedroom, I did want to say this is a queen size bed and uh, it comfortably sleeps me and my fiance in here. So we have a king uh, in our house, but this sleeps is just as comfortable. Moving out into the hallway here into the living room, um, I'll show you a few things that I've added that I like. This door would never stay open right. And I installed this here. To, it lets the door shut and stay or open and stay open because otherwise it would just sit there like that and it would never stay where you wanted it to um, and most of the time depending on the slope of the camper it would stay closed I didn't like that so I added that as one of my little inventions here this door goes to the bathroom it swings open like that um, in the bathroom you have a lot of a pretty good amount of space in here it's there's enough room that you can sit on the toilet and be comfortable there's a sink in here you've got this cabinet that just kind of has storage for everything there's one underneath here you can use for toilet paper or whatever um open the shower here i've never used the shower but it's very comfortable uh good size we always just use the showers in the uh bath houses and stuff provided at campgrounds but I would not be against using this shower um, if I was camping somewhere that I needed to. It's actually super nice. You got space for soaps and stuff like that, and the ledge down there for everything. And I'm I'm six foot two, and I'm able to climb up inside this shower. And um, my head is, you know, they have this uprise in here that you can put your head in if you need to, but my head don't even touch the ceiling. And um, there is, I'll show you. Uh, you got your lights in here, and you can turn this one off over the shower. Um, and then this one be the only one that comes on from the light switch. That is for if you are running this camper off of the battery, and um, you want to save battery power just running only the lights you need, you can turn off certain lights in here. And then this other switch turns on this fan as an exhaust fan. Moving on to the living room, um, it comes factory with a 32-inch TV this sound bar and a little stereo there. Um, you've got uh, outside speakers as well connected to that stereo. Um, you've got a large pantry area here. Um, we keep food in the top. 
different things up here. That bread is old. Um, and then down here, we keep our towels, and most of them are inside where we've washed them and just haven't brought them back out. Um, under here, I keep my games because sometimes you don't have cell phone signal or anything like that, and so we keep games down here, different little things. Um, the remotes stay right there during transport. Um, I don't ever worry about them falling off. Here's the refrigerator. Up here's your freezer. Um, right here's your main body of the refrigerator. Got plenty of room in there. Mine, the light is burned out in it and I haven't gotten it fixed yet. Um, got a decent stove and an oven, which I've never even opened. And then here's your sink. Has this little space here that uh, you can use as a little workstation if you're preparing food or you can take it out and access the sink. And then there's storage here that passes through to the front um, underneath the sink and everything like that. Right here, I have a drawer. This is mainly where I keep different things. This is a bug zapper. Um, very handy for camping in the summertime if there's a lot of bugs and stuff around. Right here, this is a little thing I bought. I was going to hang this in my shower and a wire pulls out of it and hooks into this piece here and use it to dry your clothes. Right here I've got utensils and pot holders, Ziploc bags, stuff like that. Uh, this is my TV I set outside when we're camping on a table. Uh, I have the, the prep kit for it so we can mount it out there or you know take it from inside to outside. Um, same thing with the TV in the bedroom is what that's originally intended for. But I have another kit I'm going to put on this TV and hang it on the outside wall of the camper. Over here, we have our booth that we've converted into a table because last time we were out somewhere, had some friends staying with us, and so they slept on the table, and then I had another friend sleep on the couch. The couch, this camper is a 2016, um, and the couch is in a little rough shape. Just these cheap knockoff leather start deteriorating and I plan to replace it soon, but it's very comfortable to sleep on uh, just using a sheet. There's storage underneath it that I use. Um, there's some outdoor games and stuff like that. Next to the couch, there's a light switch that you can turn on that turns on lights only over the couch. There are two lights over the dining booth here. You can turn on individually with a button. And then there's the same over these recliners back here. You can turn these on individually with a button as well. Those are not connected to the main light switch that does the main part of the camper. Right here you've got your inside light, uh, your water pump, water heater, porch light, awning light, and then your slide in and out and your awning in and out. And then as well as your little access panel. Over here by the door, the, the main door, you have two recliners with a table in between them. Over the top, you've got three large drawers that are storage compartments. Um, I keep lanterns. There's an extension cord up there. Um, nothing in that one yet. And nothing in this one yet. Um, same thing over the top of the couch. You've got different little storage compartments and things in here. Um, lots of storage in this camper, uh, especially for just two people. Under the booth, you have storage on each side. Uh, this side in particular has a door outside that you can access with your key. And so you can, I keep my chairs in here. Um, they're not in it right now because I used them recently and just haven't put them back. But uh, you, you can keep chairs in here and uh, the little door back there that's underneath that little screen thing that somebody added. Um, you can open that from the outside and uh, use that to retrieve your items. Or if it's raining, which is what I've used it for recently, uh, it's raining and everybody comes inside to seek shelter, sometimes you don't have enough seating area for people. And so I can access my chairs, pull them out, and set them up in here so we have somewhere to sit while it's raining if you have visitors or anything like that. I have a very large window in the back, two small ones on each side, decent amount of windows behind uh, the chairs and stuff over here in the slide. And then there is only the one window in the uh, master bedroom. That is your emergency exit window. Here's the thermostat for the heating and air. 
Um, I think it has, I believe it has a 12,000 BTU uh, air conditioner on top of it. Um, it does very good in heat mode because you have a gas furnace. In air mode, it does very good unless it is extremely hot outside. I would not take this camper anywhere if you plan on being inside during the day, uh, during the months of July, August, things like that, depending on where you live, because this is, the outside of the camper is dark colored. The, everything on it's just black and tan and stuff like that. And it, it gets very warm in here in the summertime. Um, that's why I have several little fans hidden around the inside of the camper. Um, I keep all my doors open to circulate air because the bathroom and the bedroom get more airflow than the main part of the living room. So it'll be cold in the bathroom, pretty cool in the bedroom, and it'll be warm about 78 degrees in the camper with it air running all day. I even open these vents to sometimes dump more air into the living room, but it doesn't really help. That's my only complaint with the camper is that it gets, it gets hot in here uh, when it's really, really hot and sunny outside. Um, that's also taken into mind that is not at a state park that is that the campgrounds that I had those problems with were open campgrounds no shade trees and stuff like that at the sites um, that's normally what we go to because I use this as like a second home to travel um, we do a lot of recreational camping but I also take it down if I'm visiting family or things like that so I have a place to stay forget to showcase uh, microwave pretty nice um, I guess the lights burned out in there too over here, you have these overhead cabinets you can use. This is where we keep all our plates and storage. Uh, containers for cooking, things like that. Um, I added this paper towel holder here underneath the uh, underneath this cabinet. Um, it's literally just adhesive. It just sticks right there. Very easy to install. There is a light right here under the counter. There's one for the oven hood. Uh, I think I've showed all the lights and stuff in it. All right, we'll head outside here. Right now I'm going to show you the awning. It has a power awning on it. So I press a button and it opens up just like that. There's no, ain't got to fool with it or anything like that. And then when you're done, you just press the button and reel it back in. There's a LED light strip on it for awning lights. And then here is the porch light. You just press the button, uh, retract, and it reels right back in. All right, now we're moving on to the outside. Um, there's my truck over there I used to haul it with. Um, it's... Anyways, as I was saying, moving on to the outside, we got this tan outer color, uh, black and gray accents everywhere. Sorry, black and brown accents everywhere. Um, it is, the front of it is dark, everything like that. Um, you have a solar port here where you can open and plug up solar panels battery uh propane tanks electric jack here's the paths pass through storage on the front and in here i keep different things canopies jacks different things like that rope lights to put around the front um a level is a big one one notable mention about the camper is that it runs off of 20 pound propane cylinders, which I've taken off to uh, get filled up. That means that you pretty much can never run out of propane because you can swap them at a Dollar General for $22. You can get another tank completely full. And so anywhere you're camping, if you realize you've run out of propane and uh, Say it's a Saturday and the propane store is closed or something, you can just go and swap it for 44 bucks, get two full tanks. And so after 30 seconds, you've got your propane tank swapped back onto there. And uh, you're ready to throw your, your cover on. And you're back in business. Having these tanks right here also come in handy for, uh, for grilling out. And get this compact grill here, which I got. It slides in these boxes. Get you an adapter hose because this takes the one pound propane tanks, but the Coleman adapter hose plugs right into the big ones and grill away. Now, normally I'd have my grill set up underneath the awning with the awning light helping me out here, but since I'm actually at home and I'm just using my 
camping grill hooked to my camper's propane tank. So I'm just using the, the lights from my house and this little light here because I didn't want to have to fool with disconnecting this propane tank, which all you got to do is just unscrew that and uh, unattach that hose and this comes right out. And when you're done with the grill, it just rolls right up in here. You clear out a path and it, it folds down and it just wheels right in with a little handle. So this one doesn't have an outdoor kitchen, but it's almost like, you know, that grill was built just for this application. So I can slide it right out and set it up here and cook. Moving around to the back, here's this other side of this. It's a smaller door, um, but it works just as good. I have the elbow that I leave on the camper, so I'm not messing with that connection all the time. Here's your drain pipes outside of the slide. This is that door I mentioned about inside earlier. Then moving around to this, we added this stuff. Um, put this little rack back here. And I have this box on the back that I keep my hoses, um, tools, different things like that. And then of course my spare tire is right here. Here's that large window from the outside that's on the back. And then lastly, one of the last things I've done to this is right here I added this receiver. Because up in the front I have a hitch that goes in here that comes out and it has a flagpole holder. I also have a 10 foot flagpole that goes in that and goes all the way up above the top of the camper. And on the top of it has the attachment for a Starlink dish. And I have Starlink on the mobile plan that I take with me, use when I can get service, which is an open area where I can see the stars. And um, I just run my cable around the camper to the other side and I put it in that little cubby uh, through the pass-through storage and just let the door prop closed. And that's where I put my router and that's where I plug it up at. And I have, you know, fast high-speed internet wherever I go, as long as I can see the sky for the most part. Right back here, I have my other camper that I use. Um, this is just when I'm going somewhere or needing to sleep along the way on a trip. Um, but over here is where I keep my Starlink and I can show you more about that if you're interested later. And um, obviously you've seen this before in a video, um, hope to be using it again soon. It's just so cold right now. But uh, I think that's all for today. I'll t attach a couple of videos and clips of us camping around different places uh, in the big camper as well, just so you can see it in use. All right, we've got the camper right here. We're gonna do some camping. We got it on the side, we got it leveled front and back. Now we're just gonna put the jacks down. Is plugging it up. Get our cord all the way down here. We have a 30 amp, so we're going to go to this 30 amp plug. We'll turn on the 30. The camper now has power. In most cases, I'll have someone spot my slide when I let it out, but I've left enough room here that I know my slide isn't going to hit anything. So now we go inside with our jacks down. You want to put your jacks down first. We're going to roll the slide out. You got to watch for obstacles like that. This chair moved during transport. These rugs are on that slide. That will mess your slide up. That right there would have ruined my day. All right, now we can turn our lights on. One of the most important things to remember if you're winter camping is uh, you want to turn on your propane. It's a big one you don't want to forget. Because it is a cool 42 degrees outside. 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn that heat on, get this thing warming up so we can get in here because it's a little, a little late of a start. So, wanna get as warm and as comfortable as possible as soon as we can. Now we're gonna hook our water up. I normally bring a Y here so I have a hose to wash my hands, but I forgot it. I used it at home. These no freeze water spigots are always full of rust. So you want to turn it on before you hook your water up to it. Let it run for a second, see if any mud comes out. This one's clear. So someone just used it. You want to make sure you have a pressure reducer and then your water filter before you hook your hose up. I was getting a phone call as I was filming it, but you want to have your spigots turned on inside when you turn your water on so it doesn't hurt anything. I don't know why we do it. It's just what I've always done. And you want to make sure you have an extra hose because this camper, the water is on the front, but the power is on the back. And so some sites, it's uh, it, the water doesn't reach. We've had that happen before at state parks.